Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to interact with a smart contract that lives on the blockchain with Web3.py. So we're not going to create the smart contract ourselves. We can use one that already exists on the Ethereum blockchain. To find a contract, we just have to go to etherscan.io. Here, Etherscan is a very popular Ethereum blockchain explorer. You can search by address, token, or transaction hash, a block, a token, or more. And you can find smart contracts and transactions. So here I can see the current price of Ether, the transactions, the average gas price, and the Ethereum transaction history in for the past 14 days. I can also see the difficulty for the mining and the hash rate, as well as the market cap. I can see the latest blocks that have been added to the blockchain and the latest transactions that have occurred. So that's at the home page. On the blockchain, I can view transactions, pending transactions, contract internal transactions, blocks, forked blocks, view uncles, top accounts, and verified contracts. So here you can check out different contracts that have been added to the blockchain. You can also search for contracts that you want to find either on Etherscan or just on Google and it will show up on Etherscan. For example, you could search up a contract for something that you already know about like Dogecoin or the NFT for CryptoKitties. We can also see tokens like the top coin tokens, the top NFT tokens and more. And we have resources and more. So Etherscan is quite popular. Here is an example of a smart contract on Etherscan. You can find this by searching for it. Okay, so here, this is for a contract, and this is the contract address. This refers to the kitten token, so that is the tracker. The token is the kitten token. You can track transactions. You can also click on the contract itself. So here's an example of a contract on Etherscan. You can also find any other contract that you'd like. Okay, so if you click on the contract address, then you are at the contract information. Okay, if you scroll down, you can see transactions, internal transactions, and details about the contract itself. So you have the contract name and the compiler version that was used. Then you can see information about this contract. Okay, so here this is for a kitten coin ETH, referring to a meme coin. All right, so here is the contract details. You can see the code behind it, the security audit, and the ABI. So we're interested in the ABI here for our example. So I'm going to hit copy to copy this ABI to the clipboard. The ABI contains all of the information about what the contract has, like inputs, functions, names, variables, and it's put into this format. Okay, so then we can go back to our Google Colab and let's make a variable to store the ABI as a string. Okay, so I just pasted the ABI for that contract. And the ABI is unique to each contract unless the contracts are exactly the same in terms of code. Okay, then we're going to also need the contract address. So for the contract address, just scroll to the top and then copy the contract address. I'm going to save that as another variable called contract address as a string. Notice that it should start with OX followed by some strings or some characters, some letters and numbers. That is the format for a contract address. Okay, next we're going to create an instance of the contract with web3.eth.contract. We're going to pass in the address argument, which is the contract address, and then the ABI is the ABI. So that we can save as our contract instance. Then we can call one of the functions from the contract. So you can take a look at the contract and see what functions does it have that you can access. They have to be public for them to be accessible. And all the functions you can see in the Solidity code for the contract or in the ABI as well, they'll be listed here under something like type function. 
typically the solidity code is easier to read. Okay, then we can call the contract instance and call its function with dot functions dot total supply, which is an example of one function. Then we can use call to call the function. Okay, the result of this will be the supply of the token. So we can call this token supply, and then we can print out the token supply. I'm going to run this code cell and look at that. We get returned the token supply for that contract. Another example, we can get the token symbol with contract instance dot functions dot symbol, another function from this contract and call it. Then we can print out the token symbol. I'll run this code cell and look at that. We get KTTN. So that's the symbol for the kitten token. Okay, and we can take a look at the code for this. You can search for kitten token. Okay, so there is that contract itself, and it relies on other contracts. And look at that, its, it's symbol is KTTN, so we were able to get the correct information. So that's an example of how you can interact with a contract that lives on the blockchain with Python and Web3. Join me in our next lecture, we're going to start another project. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.